Welcome, aloha. Thanks so much for joining us. Think Tech Hawaii, rule of law in the new abnormal, and election issues that may make a difference and results that may make a difference. So we have the good fortune of having with us today Louise Ng, partner in Denton's, one of, if not the largest law firm in the world with branches in dozens of countries. And David Louis, former attorney general for the state of Hawaii, partner at Kobayashi Sugita and Goto. And folks, we're getting to the short strokes on the midterm elections. Are they gonna make a difference in the direction this country goes? or the principles and values that are important to you and to most of us. What do you think, Louise? Oh, thanks for starting me off, um, Chuck, but I hope that that means the rest of you, the two of you will carry the rest. But, you know, I, I, I guess I am following the midterms and the ups and downs of it with great interest because uh, I just see that the last few years have really increased uh, the, the dangers to democracy, so to speak, and the level of rhetoric and the level of bitterness and division. Um, and I, I'm not sure that this election is going to um, help reduce the bitterness and division. I, I hope it does move towards that part. Um, but I, I, I am hopeful that there is a growing, uh, I guess, um, maybe tended, maybe strength in the appeal of a democratic party values, and I'm thinking in terms of reproductive choice and, um, you know, just upholding the rule of law and and the knowledge of civic engagement and, and democracy rather than um, intellectual dishonesty. I'm hoping anyway that, um, stainer minds will prevail on those issues. I was actually, I guess, you know, maybe one hopeful sign is I was in Alaska right before their election to fill the seat that had been vacated by the um, late congressman and Mary Pel Peltola um, prevailed over Sarah Palin. And she is a democratic candidate in a red state. Um, what I found interesting about her is that, you know, from all of her uh, interviews and the like. She seems to be somebody who wants to bridge divides, who has a history of bridging divides, who had kind things to say even about working with Sarah Palin, even though they disagree. And if we can get more people like that in Congress and in places of power, um, I think that that would be important. That's a great insight. David, how do things look to you? Hey, so um, uh, I am how shall I say this, always hopeful uh, that uh, democracy as we have known it in the United States for the past, let's say 30 years, uh, or maybe 50 years will prevail. But, you know, there's many forms of democracy in this world. Uh, and, and many of them have resulted in authoritarian regimes. Uh, Russia is theoretically a democracy. Hungary is theoretically a democracy, and China is theoretically a democracy, uh, but none of those are truly democratic um, uh, countries. Uh, so the, the thing about elections is, is they come up, uh, they're very banal, uh, they're, they're very sort of plain, uh, but they have tremendous consequences, tremendous consequences. And, and so while we are focused on um, the Senate races and the governor races and things like that. Uh, some important elections are going to occur in the down ballot um, offices for the elections officials, actually, the Secretary of States, because there's a bunch of election deniers and, and stop the steal Trump supporters uh, who are more than willing to uh, throw out the actual ballots and not deal with the true facts, but say that they would certify or, or decertify an election that went against Trump. And they're up for election. And 
if they get elected in Arizona or any of the other states uh, where they're they're on the ballot, it will be a truly a disaster. Um, and democracy as we know it is undergoing tremendous changes. So I worry about that. I also, you know, it, it, while I appreciate that uh, this Native American woman, Mary, and I don't know how to pronounce her last name, Peltula or something Peltola. like that. Peltola. Um, even though she, she got elected over Sarah Palin, that was only to fill out the three or four month term. And there's going to be another election. And I think Sarah Palin is going to put up a better contest. So it may be a very close election. And it's not at all clear that she wins uh, in the November election uh, because uh, Alaska is truly a red state. And so uh, uh, that may happen. And, and last time around, Sarah Palin said, told her, told her voters not to put down any second rank choices uh, because they have rank, vote, rank choice voting. Uh, which was a tremendous mistake. And I don't think they're going to make that mistake again. Uh, so we don't know really what's going to happen there. Good insights and perspectives. And thanks too for bringing up the fact that democracy takes many forms. And for us here in the United States, it's long been maybe more of an aspirational goal and an ideal than something that we can comfortably say we've achieved with stability. In fact, in a number of respects, we're still short of a democracy in the electoral college as opposed to the popular vote for the presidency. And in exactly the areas that you point out, David, where election control, removal of people from voting rolls, restriction of access to voting by taking away mail voting, taking away absentee voting opportunities. All those things make us less a democracy. So where do you think the turning point issues are going to be for what direction this country takes, particularly in the congressional elections in the midterms. Louise, any thoughts? Well, let me just add this thought. Um, I think, as David said, the congressional elections are important, but I also think that um, we need to pay attention to local elections as well, because that's where the power is devolving for such things as reproductive rights, gun control, and the like, and, and voting rights as well, unfortunately. Um, congressional side, you know, what I've been, I've been hearing on the news is that on the Republican side, they're going to be playing up the economy and crime and the need for strong leadership to address those issues. Of course, on the Democratic side, we've got the bigger issues of, uh, well, not just reproductive freedom, but gun, uh, gun control, sort of the other side of, of, of safety. Um, and uh, it, it seems to me that, I guess it all, it all, to me, it boils down to Voters need to stay engaged. They need to vote. They need to be reading and thinking critically. Um, and, you, you know, voting on all of the elections, up and down ballot. Um, David, you make a great point about the importance of even Secretary of State um, elections and certainly our, our state and local legislatures. Although we don't, you know, we are a pretty blue state, it seems to me. Even here in Hawaii, we do need to be vigilant because, of course, there are strong views on both sides. You know, we we in Hawaii live in a bubble. Uh, we, we we're a strong blue state. Um, we you know, which is in some ways unfortunate. I wish the Republican Party here was stronger. Uh, I wish there was, and and there are a number of people in the Democratic Party uh, uh, who might be uh, enticed to become Republicans again, uh, or might have chosen Republicans if, if the Republican Party was more moderate, uh, uh, both nationally and, and locally. Um, but having a two-party system or having more voices, I think, is important because it gives people a choice. 
uh, and it allows them to express themselves. Um, as far as what's going to happen in the future, uh, I think that congressional races will shape what President Biden is able to uh, get done. Uh, it, it sounds like the House is going to flip, and so then that's no longer going to be a Democratic uh, House. Um, that, that's what I'm hearing. I don't know. And maybe the Senate will, maybe the Senate won't. Um, uh, we have such a divided country and such divided government, it will hamstring Joe Biden from doing almost anything except taking executive action where he can take executive action. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to have continued gridlock uh, in Congress, which is unfortunate and, and is a sad thing. It's, it's certainly no way to run a country. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, where did bipartisanship go? I mean, it seems to have died off with folks like um, Senator Inouye and the uh, senator from Alaska. And who's going to bring it back? And how long is it going to take? I, I you know I'm in. I can't wait that long. No, and that's a good point. I think the only instance of a clear effort at bipartisanship on a key issue, gun control came from Chris Murphy right after the Uvalde <clears throat> misfortunes and tragedy. And even there, the changes were extremely limited and not likely to make a large difference in the access to guns for most people. And in fact, even in Hawaii, we're seeing stronger and stronger pushes for more access to not only open carry, but even concealed carry legislation. Yeah, I, I think that um, the actions of the United States Supreme Court have made this country more dangerous, have made life cheaper, and have made the propensity for violence in cities and states uh, much, much greater. Um, the push of the Supreme Court to allow virtually unlimited uh, gun uh, ownership, concealed carry, uh, and, and open carry in any uh, places um, is leading to huge numbers. I saw a, an article uh, the other day just citing the huge numbers of deaths, uh, the d doubling and tripling of deaths by gun violence that have occurred in the United States since these rulings have come out. And, and I put that right at the feet of the, uh, you know, Samuel Alito, uh, uh, John Roberts, uh, Clarence Thomas, and, and the others. Uh, and it's sad and, and it's, it's unfortunate uh, that, that that is occurring. I think we've said this before in other, uh, in other sessions here and even outside of the sessions, but uh, David, you know, I, I feel the same as David. And what I feel is just horribly ironic is that at the same time as they are loosening gun controls, um, they are loose, um, tightening reproductive freedom. But the freedoms that you can, you're be free to choose guns, just not your bodily, your reproductive rights. And so there's this whole disregard of, you know, you're forcing people to bring children into the, a more dangerous world. What the heck is going on there? Um, and yes, the Republicans might talk about what well, we're going to also address child care and child wel welfare, but, you know, where does that come in in their economically conservative views on things? Um, it's just, yeah, it's nuts. Well, and that's a great question because unless I've missed something, which is quite possible, I haven't really seen any kind of specific, concrete, detailed Republican platform on any of these issues <laughs> other than some that come out from Scott or Paul or others as kind of fringe positions. So where are we headed? Well, I think at least for the courts and, and uh, you know, the Supreme Court has made it very clear that they are going to uh, roll the clock back, that they are going to cut back on federalism, 
they are going to hamstring the national uh, agencies uh, from being able to do anything in the in the common good and the public good, um, and that they are going to allow state legislatures to become supreme uh, without any, um, uh, um, how shall I say this, uh, without any uh, rails on them or guidelines or fairness or basic equality of opportunity or, or basic equity. Um, and so we are, we are going backwards now. You know, it, it's interesting, and I was thinking about this, Chuck, because your, your show is the rule of law. Um, but, you know, the rule of law doesn't, it, we, we use that as shorthand for something that's good um, and something that's fair and something that's equitable and that no man should be above the law. And that is true. No man should be above the law. But there was a time in this country, in the Deep South, when the rule of law was used as a tool of oppression against Blacks. And in fact, I, I remember all of these stories where the Nazis came over and studied the rules of law that the state legislatures, which are now being allowed to do these kinds of things, had put into place that discriminated against Blacks and took away fundamental rights from Blacks, uh, women, other people of color under the guise of the rule of law. And the Nazis said, oh, that is terrific genius. We're going to use that and we're going to uh, uh, oppress and then exterminate uh, Jewish people. So it's not, I mean, rule of law, the way you, we kind of think about it is a positive thing. And if, and if there are basic fundamental fairness values behind the rule of law, then I certainly support that. But it can be a tool of oppression and unfairness and discrimination as well. And, and people do that. Uh, and we always have to be careful about that. And that's a great insight because what we're hearing from both of you is the need to reestablish to support and protect the values on which democracy is able to achieve stability and growth and to be available on a more egalitarian basis, on a more equitable basis to especially even those marginalized and disempowered. And over on the other side, again, unless I'm missing something, I'm not seeing the values and principles of democracy getting that kind of priority. In fact, in voting rights, in reproductive rights, in affirmative action and educational rights, David, you nailed it. We're going backward fairly you know, quickly. What I find so frustrating is how the right is and conservatives are using, misusing, co-opting the terms of racism, um, anti-democracy and the like to put drive their point home, which is in, in my view, basically abandoning all sense of principles and value in de democracy and just going for, okay, what's gonna get us to power? And I found distressing and sort of along the lines of that, the recent um, statement by our former, she former Congresswoman, a leave in the Democratic Party for an independent party and accusing the Democrats of censorship and um, anti-democratic principles and the like. Where have you been? Oh, I guess that's a whole problem. Where have you been? Um, but, you know, and I guess as we talk about this, even though I say I am impatient for um, more representation of de Democrats in Congress, I think we are in the long game. And in that regard, I'm thinking, for instance, of, you know, they're going to be having to be voices that speak up, tell stories, and just continue to speak up. Um, Chuck, you had shared last week a, a piece by uh, Judge, uh, no, uh, Professor Richardson, who um, does such incisive um, commentaries on almost a daily basis. But she had cited the um, comments by Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson in one of her first, first hearings on a voting rights case and how the state, was it Alabama, 
was using the 14th Amendment to say we need to be, we can't be race conscious. It's a race blind, you know, equality it, it needs to be race blind. And she turned that on that head and said, well, if you're going to look at historical constant, you know, the histor historical roots of the Constitution, think about the fact that the 14th Amendment was put in place to, um, you know, combat discrimination against Blacks and to um, right the wrongs that had been done against Blacks. And uh, I thought that was a point that she's probably going to have to make, be making repeatedly to the originalists on the Supreme Court, but it's good to have her voice. And that's really important. And in fact, right after her teaching, Justice Alito and the others, a really important legal and historical lesson on the real origin and intent of the 14th and 15th Amendments to counter policies that were not race neutral. I mean, just the idea, I was born in Louisiana, but the idea of, of Alabama coming in and saying, no, we need to be race neutral. We can't take race into account. And David's phrase, off the rails, may come into play there, particularly with our uh, former Hawaii con congressperson as well. So David Louise, what do you see that might turn this back in a healthier, more value-based direction? <laughs> that, that's the uh, $64 million question uh, or, or um, and, and um, you know, uh, it's not clear at all, I think, uh, as to whether or not people will come out and vote. Um, but that's, you know, the ballot box is the way to power in this country. Uh, the Republicans have been more successful about that uh, and in focusing upon that and uh, than the Democrats have. Uh, part of that, I think, may be um, uh, the, the constituents uh, that have made up uh, the Democratic Party in the past and just the global forces that have occurred. Uh, but I still believe that it is the ballot box, uh, which is the great, great equalizer. Um, and I just, I hope uh, that, that people uh, will vote, you know, and, and uh, vote in favor of values. Uh, that are democratic, traditionally held values. Um, but, you know, that doesn't always happen. It uh, doesn't always happen. And, and people vote for their reasons, not my reasons. Um, so, you know, I'm hopeful, but, but I'm also skeptical and pessimistic <laughs> at the same time. And I keep thinking back on the theme I've mentioned before about the importance of well, it's a, the long game again. So, you know, it's education. It is focusing on and reviving more civics education and supporting that kind of thing. And, you know, the storytelling, the storytelling is important on, you know, that's how we kind of understand how these principles affect people in real life, historically and currently. And uh, so I think we need to look to our kids, make sure that they are socially aware. And I, I do get a sense that, that in many respects, they are way more socially aware um, and uh, sensitive to social injustice um, than perhaps our us hardened older folks who have been seen the ups and downs. But I just, you, you know, I think it's, you know, having courts in the community, for instance, having the Supreme Court um, take their uh, oral arguments to the high schools and inspire hopefully future generations of kids to go to law school or become legislatures and understand um, you know, our historic democratic principles and, and what makes government run. I hope all of that will get people engaged. And in the meantime, you know, send in your darn ballot. So one of the things that I, I think I'm hopeful will make a difference is the uh... Um, January 6th committee hearings that mm. are going on today. Uh, I don't know if that will have an impact uh, on these midterm elections because uh, uh, Donald Trump is not on the ballot and, and the January 6th thing is all about Donald Trump. 
uh, but it's also about his supporters as well and whether or not they uh, they get elected and the people who cozy up to Donald Trump. Um, and, and what's unclear is whether or not those hearings, which are a little bit of inside baseball, will make a difference to the average person who votes uh, or whether or not they're going to vote based upon gas prices, the economy, uh, or just the culture wars that they don't like, you know, certain groups or they don't like the direction of certain things. And so they're going to vote in a way um, or they're going to vote. You know, I mean, many times popularity contests are based upon how a person looks, not not what they say. I mean, we have Herschel Walker uh, running against Ralph Warnock. Um, and as we discussed earlier uh, before the show, um, the latest interviews with Herschel Walker uh, make him look like an idiot. Um, but, um, you know, some people may vote for him because they think that he's their idiot, uh, as opposed to, you know, being somebody else's idiot, uh, and that he can be uh, accounted upon to vote a certain way, even if he is an idiot. Um, uh, so you just don't know. Like I said, I'm hopeful but I'm also a little pessimistic. Well, the other thing is that I'm sure all of us get like too many emails, crisis emails about you need to donate to this or that campaign. I do think it is important to put your money where your mouth is and donate. I wish they would stop sending so many, but I, you know, I think that's an integral part. And I, I think getting our young uns to vote as well. Um, but you know, what started off this conversation and topic two be off camera, I think, was the whole issue of, yes, the effect and January 6th and the insurrection hearing should have impact. Will they have impact by the same token? Why is it taking so long for um, a criminal like John, uh, Donald Trump to have consequences to his actions? Um, that is crazy, too. I mean, most of us, had we done half the things he did, would already be prosecuted and in jail. Um, and, you know, there's this strong part of the population that still believes in him dis despite everything. Although I was interested to hear in a, a NPR commentary yesterday, one Republican strategist saying, well, you know, he's actually not that popular among voters. He's help He's not helping some candidates. Well, then let's hear about that from the media. What's the media doing? Always focusing on him. You know, that part is frustrating too. Okay, this is just venting some of my frustrations. But um, I just think it goes back to people need to be critical readers and thinkers and also just look at what are the big issues facing our country in the long term and what kind of country do we want to leave for our kids? And then in the meantime, are we educating our kids to, um, you know, think that critically too and to value democracy? And those are really important points because. If there's major damage, exactly as you point out, to the democratic institutions, principles and values in the short term, they're not going to be there available to us in the long term. Of course, it's going to take a lot of work to get them back. And it'll take so a long what, time. What do you see in the younger generations? Is there any sense of where their mentality, where their awareness, where their choices may be directed or headed? Well, you know, I see a mixed bag, yeah. <clears throat> quite frankly. Um, I think there is a tremendous cohort of younger leaders who are fearless, uh, who are ready to step up. They're willing to give their opinions. Uh, their opinions, unfortunately, are not always my opinions, um, uh, but but that's why, you know, that's democracy. That's they're entitled to their opinions. Um, and at the same time, so I, I mean, I think there's a tremendous amount of young people who are willing to lead, able to lead, uh, and have the gumption and spirit, determination, and ambition to lead and to get involved. At the same time, there's a tremendous amount of apathy, uh, both in younger people and in the electorate generally. Uh, they don't see how elections affect their lives, and and or they've 
given up hope. Um, and so it's it's a dichotomy, uh, uh, both a lot of hope, but then a lot of uh, 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 depressing factors that exist as to where we're going. And David and I may have maybe, uh, you know, biased views because, of course, our kids do tend to share the views that that we have in terms of what is social justice and economic justice, racial justice and the like. Um, but I have to say that, you know, as I listen more broadly, uh, you know, I, I'm what I'm hearing is just more attention to, OK, you know, accepting more diverse people, wanting to achieve a more socially just society. Actually, environmental and climate change is a big issue and it should be a big issue for them because they will be living the effects of global warming. Um, it, you know, so I, I'm hoping that I, we see our kids, you know, getting more engaged, at least speaking up and that's good. And I hope we're going to see that on a, on a broader basis. And on that note, we're out of time today, but thanks so much. At least we'll see where youth helps take us and what kind of difference they make. Indeed. Thanks Thank so you. much, David, Louise. Thanks. Thanks. And everyone, join us again in two weeks. We'll be back. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.